and I'm Elisa Bokeen, and we are two brown chicks changing the face of therapy on both, both sides, sides of, of the couch. couch. Welcome. Today, if you have been following Mel Melanin and Mental Health's page today, this is our second episode. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Today we have Courtney Glade. The storyteller, yes. director, writer, yes. producer, right all of that. Right, right. Yes. Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> he has beautiful pictures of him and his little girl. Love it. Um, and so welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, obviously, this is a little bit of a different type of guest than we typically have, right? We normally have therapists or people working more directly in the mental health field. But you also are making changes um, or making moves when it comes to minority mental health. So tell us a little bit more about what you do and what you're doing when it comes to mental health. Well, what I'm really trying to do is bring awareness to everything that we go through in life, just uh, mentally, spiritually. Mm -hmm. And mental health is really, really a heavy episode that people don't really think is real or really don't pay attention to it. So um, me being a writer and a director, I wanted to do uh, conscious content, mm -hmm. um, just content that changes people and people can relate to and not just for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a, uh, I have a show that I, I've worked on called Amygdala that each episode uh, discusses a different topic mm -hmm. uh, dealing with mental illness or just uh, problems that people go through. Okay, Feeling. I love that. Yeah. I love conscious, conscious content. content. Conscious yeah. content. Yeah, that should be everybody's I'm thing like, is that, <laughs> do you have a t-shirt? Not yet. <laughs> because I can help you get one. Yeah, <laughs> Get, get a whole network. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. I love that. That's that's so true. I mean, what is it that you're putting out there and that people can relate to, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's what I love about what you're saying. It's so in line with what we talk about is how are we talking about these stories? How are we presenting these stories in a way that people are engaged? Right. Yeah. Right. It reminds me of like one Oprah, like her whole mm -hmm. Point, well, the original point, I think, of the network was to be a little bit more positive, a lot more spiritual and things like that to kind of, you know, have other stuff in there as well, but more about bettering yourself. But then also, um, recently, in the last couple of years, Jay Shetty, is that his name? I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but he does, like, all these, like, little sh short snippet videos where he's literally just talking about, like, like, being a better person, like, how do you deal with the breakup, how do you, but it's, like, very much about bettering yourself mm -hmm. and learning more about yourself, and he says he wants to see a world where people, people's attention are more about, like, they still want to be entertained, but they mm -hmm. want to be in entertained with things that better them, so yeah. that's kind of, like, what you're saying. Yeah, 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 like, so with mine, um, people have called the amygdala, like, the new age twilight zone, because mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not... Everything in the middle of the don't have a positive ending because that's not what happens right. all the time. Yeah. It's not a un, it's a real look at the things that we go on in life and a a real outcome in mm. most of the episodes. So like that's one of the different things where I try not to sugarcoat this make believe everything if you don't if you don't tackle the things that you're going through, mm -hmm. everything might not be okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you have to tackle these things that you're going through and don't bury them and push them under the rug because if you push them under the rug, that's so much. Right. And this is with relationships and Definitely. family history yes. and like mm -hmm. everything. There are so many families that I know of that have pushed so much stuff under the rug. They created mental illness mm -hmm. within the family mm -hmm. because it's not something that ha it's just the things that we've been through that builds who we are. Right. And we can't live a certain life because we, we have to live this life compared to what our parents have taught us and then we got tattooed with the last relationship and this, this, mm -hmm. this, and this. Mm -hmm. So it's so much piled on who we really are that we need to shed and take away before we can even start realizing who we are and working yes, on ourselves. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that's that's what, what art does, right? It makes us feel something. So the way that you're describing it it, it, it makes me think of you're really presenting the audience with this ability where you're able to feel, right, mm -hmm. kind of go through these storylines and then provoke the thought of like, hey, you know, are there areas in your life that, that you need to pay some attention to where you need to be maybe more proactive about your own healing because things don't always turn out in right. a nice way. We, you, you were talking about it's a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation starter, and and that's so much 
a big part of the healing process, right? It's, right. The first step is awareness. Right. Like, um, I think people don't really understand, like, most psychiatrists or, or whatever, when you go to them, the healing is in the being able to communicate what you're going through. Mm. So if, if you can understand and be able to communicate what you're going through, mm -hmm. that's a healing process in its own. But what happens is a lot of times in our, in, uh, in our culture, mm -hmm. um, it's not supposed to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. we, you can't go to your parents and say, hey, I, I'm heartbroken, my boyfriend, blah, 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 my girlfriend, such, 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 are you? Yeah, right, yeah, and right. you guys have, right. have right. done this damage. to me and yeah. caused damage. So what happens is those kids become adults and do the same thing to their children. Right. And it just continues to get Yeah, worse. the cycle doesn't get broken. Yeah. yeah it's, so it's a communication thing, definitely, um, which we lack. Right. We lack extremely. So I just wanted to do something to, to be... Um, this this industry thing is weird, though, because when I initially did Amygdala, it was to just put them out. But now we're we're doing so much, and now networks are com right. coming involved, and it's like, well, hold it. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me hold it. And I have a, really pro I, I have a problem with, like... Um, people telling me what to do. Right, you know, like, right. Like, I'm, like, oh, I'm going to release it anyway. Yeah, because like, I'm an artist. Because it's mine. It's mine. So I, I get, I get yeah. that whole print yeah. shine on. It's mine. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting... Um, the the turnaround has been really, really right. interesting in the process. I'm sure it's difficult, especially when you know you have good content. And in that whole trying to convince people in the beginning, and then once yeah. people kind of catch on, now they're trying to tell you how to... No, no, <laughs> right. no. Right. no. Right. when I was down, right. Right. when I was yeah. begging for this yeah. ride. Yeah. I was at the bottom, now I'm here. Right. Now. Right. Yeah. Right. It, 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 and then what's also scary is running into people that are just doing it to, to jump on the bandwagon. Right. Mm -hmm. right because right, right. those people end up destroying what you're trying to create because then they try to make it commercial which mm. changes the arts the art of it which now it doesn't communicate the way that it should communicate yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah. that makes sense so i want to i want to talk more about amygdala but i want to kind of move rewind okay. to like what has led you to the path that you're on now as writer director producer like what was your childhood up until now was this a goal you always had or what led to it um i didn't know which is one of the things that i'm trying to do so when i was a kid we didn't have these opportunities that kids have now there was nobody around to tell me that you could be a screenwriter right mm, so right. it's a problem for my mom and it's a problem for my family when i'm staying in the house all day writing stories because that's not I'm not an athlete, yeah. so I, I don't really want to go outside. And I play, but when I play, I play in my imagination. So my outside playing looks weird right. because I've created this whole mm. entire world to where a stick is a sword and mm. this tree is a such and such. <laughs> and and with, all right, so much. So um, is it autism when, when mm. kids... I think my mom probably thought I had autism mm. because okay. my imagination was so strong as a kid. You say to yourself. Yeah, and um, this this look right here, you think that's autistic. It's not autistic. Oh, but that's I'm so deep in my mm. thought process that I'm really in that world. Mm. So as a kid, I was like that. My mom tell tell you that she used to have to whoop me to go outside because <laughs> I was Aww. in the room writing stories and mm. writing stories. So when I got older, my first script that I wrote was in high school. I didn't know I was writing a script. I wrote a story, and I remember I used to just pass it around, and everybody was like, wow. Mm. But we're, I was in, like, high school. I never thought about being a writer. It right. was just something that was in me. Just flowing. Just flowing. So then um, I did music for a little while, and then everything just were all my songs were small stories. Mm, like, every mm. song that I wrote was a small story. But as a kid, you know, my mom went through, was in a domestic violence relationship. And again, we grew up in like Fifth Ward. So there were a lot of things going on. And I would take these things that would happen and that would become a part of the type of story I would tell. Mm -hmm. So it just ended up, I, I always tell people like, I'm not, I never practiced storytelling. I never practiced writing. I did not go to school for this. Right. I didn't go to school a day for filmmaking. Mm -hmm. 
storytelling was just a gift that God gave me. Mm. And I taught myself how to be a director because I couldn't, at this at that time, I couldn't trust another person to tell the story that I mm. wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. So, so and then, you know, now I'm here. That's why people uh, get mad when I say I'm, I will be the best storyteller ever. <laughs> uh, ever. Why like, they be angry at that. Dead or alive, dead or alive. Like, my that's goal. my goal. <laughs> <laughs> what they got to do with you? Like, hey, I already know what my story is going to be like. And that's why, like, people always be like, you got another film? I'm like, yeah, I got a million. Y'all behind. <laughs> I love it. Did you not hear me when I said I want to be the best? Yeah, like, I want to be the best. <laughs> like, I want to become the best by doing it. Yeah, like, yeah. you continue to keep going. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about Amygdala. Like, okay. what, what was the inspiration that it was like, this story, these stories have to be told? It was an accident. Um, again, I don't do any of this on purpose. I feel like God leads me to do these things. One of my first fans was this, was it? was uh, the first episode in Amygdala, which is Ro. Mm -hmm. My first film I ever did. It's a mm -hmm. short film. And Ro is basically, Ro is about this lady, this guy that um, he he goes to work and he's just a hardworking single dad. And just one day he comes home and he watches his nanny cam. And when he watches his nanny cam, his babysitter is abusing mm -hmm. his daughter. Mm. So, you know, he chooses to take action. Right. Rose started off as one of, uh, from me, as my worst fear as a dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at first, Amygdala was going to be all of my worst fears as a father. Okay. But then it just started developing to where I would, there's so much, it's just so much <laughs> horrible things that. Mm. Right. It's so many, so many horrible things that happen that people don't know really exist. Mm -hmm. So then it just developed into a show to where I would tell stories. We don't need to create horror movies. There right. are really horrible mm -hmm. things that happen in right. life. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that it just developed to, to where each episode ended up being a different topic. And what's so great about Amygdala, is each episode is like three to eight minutes, mm -hmm. but it's an entire story. Right. So the whole first season is maybe 38 minutes, mm -hmm. but it's eight episodes long, and each episode just changes, just changes, just changes to where each episode can go, and we have domestic violence, we have HIV awareness, we have um, Alzheimer's, we have um, uh, child abuse, child molestation, yeah, you address a lot of really heavy, heavy. topics. Yeah. yeah, and that's and season two is ready to go. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. and then there isn't a lack of topics, right? right. Because yeah. there are a lot of things going on in this world. Yeah, and then each topic you can tell it in like four different ways because mm -hmm. there is something that happens in everybody in different in everyone's situation. Right. Okay. And it affects people differently. Everybody. Which, is, which is, is really what we talk about all the time, right? Like, your story is your story. Mm -hmm. And and it's so... I, I love the way that you're describing this because I think it really highlights um, just even therapy, like, is what I'm thinking about. It's like, you have your story, mm -hmm. these terrible things that may have happened, you know, or things that you're just trying to process. Mm -hmm. And then somebody bears witness to that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, even in therapy, there is no resolution. Sometimes your therapist doesn't have an answer, right? Like, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just holding space to be able to hear your story. It's kind of mm -hmm. like what you said, like mm -hmm. the, the sometimes the endings are not, you know, right. the ones that we want them to be. Right. But hearing somebody's story and being able to have somebody hear your story and hold that and, and, and whatever that, that facilitates some healing. So I'm wondering, like, while you're describing this, you know, because being an artist, mm -hmm. right, like, whatever you're funneling through there as well, like, how healing has this process been for you? Mm -hmm. um, it's great because um, it allows me to... Uh, Purge. Yeah. Mm, like yeah. The the I always say like healing starts when you are at your breaking point. Mm. Healing doesn't start until you hit rock bottom for most people. Mm -hmm. Most people have to fall on their face and something has to happen for healing to begin. Right. The thing about amygdala is amygdala puts you it's it's there is no cuts, it's very raw. Mm. 
if you're not at that rock bottom place, it'll put you there mm. to where now you can start moving on because if, if, and because some people are in denial about what's happening to them. Mm. Perfect example, like domestic violence. Some people, with the film that I did earlier this year, Blink, the guy in the film was a great man. Like, mm. he was, he was a great guy. He, he worked every day. He was a lawyer. He did, um, um, charity work for the community. Mm -hmm. He, he let his brother come stay with him. He was a provider. He loved his wife. But this dude, has a problem. Right. So what'll happen is most women will see these films right. and they'll be like, oh well that guy drunk a lot and he beat her when right. he was drunk. Got it. Right. Got it. Got it. Oh he did drugs and he beat her when he did drugs. Yeah. My man doesn't do drink or do drugs. Yeah. So this isn't the same thing right. as the, that. The excuses. Right. The guy in Blink is a great guy that has an issue and I want people to understand to start start because it's again it's mental it's a mental spiritual battle when you can't pinpoint the problem mm -hmm. so mm, you have a problem at work and you wake up one day with that problem at work but your day doesn't go this is a saturday and your day that we, your weekend isn't going good because you're not pinpointing that your issue is with your job not with your kids today, mm -hmm. not with your husband today, mm -hmm. not with anything going on. So now this part of your life is affected because you didn't pinpoint where this problem mm -hmm. is. So a lot of women, they, they're they miserable um, thinking that their life is in shambles when realistically, no, this is something mentally that went on with your mom mm -hmm. that you didn't address. And now your mom has passed. And now that's a gap or that's a hole that you can't. Or you feel that you can't fulfill because you never healed it. Mental illness is not always about... People think mental illness is those people that sit in a padded room. Right, right, right. That is not what mental not illness enough. is. Mental health issues, yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. that's not mental... Like, mental health, uh, and that's I love that it's mental health. Mental health is just like... You go to the gym every day. Right. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. You go to the gym to better yourself. Right. What do you do to better yourself? Right. Mentally, you right. have. I've been eating cake since I was five. Mm -hmm. Now, now I have. A, <laughs> now, now I'm so used to eating yeah, sweets and mm -hmm. cake that now I have to restrain myself. And now it's a battle to stop myself from eating cake. It's the same thing. You witnessed your daddy beat your mom. Mm-hmm. That's something that you have to work out because your husband beats you. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a process. And people, people, it's everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. y'all don't think we're going to finish in 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm just, I don't think. Um, no, yeah, it, right. can, it can definitely turn <laughs> yeah, into a full conversation about just mental health in general. I love, I like what you said about the character in Blink because I feel like that's something I see a lot with clients where it's this, it's the um, cognitive what is it called? Cognitive dissonance. Dissonance. Thank you. Where and it, and it's the frustration as like when you're a kid and you see this right when people admire your parents they mm -hmm. think they're these great people but at home they are different people. Right. So now you can't even necessarily tell your truth because other people are like that's not true. Your dad did this. Your right. mom does that. Right. But at home he is a completely different person. Right. And so a lot of people go through that where it's like which one is the truth? Yeah. And what can I believe? And that and it's the same thing in other areas where you're having issues at work or with family and it's like okay so what's the truth and what 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 is my brain teaching me like what i don't even know if i'm saying that right but basically like what am i being taught right. in these situations how is my brain processing what's happening and then right. that can lead to like mental illness mental health issues and then uh, on top of that you have to also start separating what your heart and your brain yep. your heart is irrational mm -hmm. it's emotional everybody men and women mm -hmm. your heart and your emotions can be swayed by what's going on in the day. Look at the fact of what's happening. That's why I tell a lot of my people, like, it doesn't matter what your situation is, you're here to think about that situation, which means you are, you are blessed to change the situation. Mm. So your heart might make you a um, uh, suicide. Those people allow their heart to make their mind. They allow, they, they thought through their heart instead of their mind. So they chose to end because they could see no hope. Mm. The pain, well, and, the pain, and I think yeah. when people die by, by suicide, there is often a lot of factors involved, and the pain does 
is so tremendous, right? right. Um, and, and I think a big part of this that I think is important for us to also know, you know, is that when you grow up in certain environments, for example, domestic violence, mm -hmm. um, if there is some sort of abuse, what is often left is trauma, right? And so trauma is 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 something that then rewires our brain mm -hmm. neurologically. Mm -hmm. It's not something that positive thinking or you know get on the good foot type <laughs> of uh, right. like no, like there is something that neurologically changes within your body mm -hmm. your your body or within your brain right. your body stores the trauma and so so many of these these situations that we're talking about then leave trauma right that can show up looking like anger it can right. show up like oh you just don't know how to be in a in a serious relationship or you don't know how to settle down and what you're really dealing with is the effects of trauma mm -hmm. that we can't just get rid of on our own. Right. Um, and, and so I think it's important to note that's why having, you know, combinations of, of all of these different channels of yeah. addressing mental health. So, right. so you speaking from it from this artistic way, um, bringing in some of your own um, experiences or people that you've seen, what have you, and starting the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So we start the conversation. Hey, maybe you recognize yourself in this space. And then, you know, you have like melanin and mental health and everybody else is kind of talking about now that you've, this is a conversation starter mm -hmm. and that you're hearing about this, here are your options, here are your paths to healing, mm -hmm. right? Because that's that's the path to healing, the first step is awareness. Awareness, right. Awareness, and so what you're doing is you're, you're you are building that awareness that these things happen and how they then affect us, mm -hmm. right? And then that's what we love. Like, let's start that conversation and know that there are other options and, and, and how these issues affect our communities and keep us stuck. Right. That's one thing about trauma. Mm -hmm. Trauma will keep you stuck right. in patterns. Mm -hmm. And so much of what is happening in our communities, uh, trauma is just rampant. Mm -hmm. And being... Uh, goes by generation. Yes. It's just being reflected from generation to generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And so then when you can't even pinpoint it, right? Like right. If, I, if I can't remember something specifically that happened in my childhood, but it may have just been the way that my mom raised me was based on whatever she had going mm -hmm. on. Maybe it wasn't something extreme where I'm like, okay, I was abused or anything like that. But maybe she wasn't as available emotionally. And so right. then that led to, you know, so those things that sometimes it's so hard to pinpoint and that's where people struggle. Um, is is well I had a good childhood or everything was fine right because because we don't know what other people go through and we don't know what's normal what's not normal and, and those type of things so sometimes we feel like my childhood was good but then as you talk to somebody and sometimes as you talk it out loud and you say like wait that might not have been the right way right. for them to handle that and then again that awareness comes about and then you can kind of separate yourself right. from it sometimes and what you're saying the heart right mm -hmm. so our emotions yeah right our emotions and I think that's one thing about um I think especially in our communities, often the reason this is, is because so often we're just trying to survive, yeah. that the time to sit and how are you feeling today? Right. How are you? How, so how was your day at school? Like so many of our families, I know mine was, it's like, I'm just trying to make sure that there's a roof over your head mm -hmm. and food on your table Yeah. and, and whatever our and parents, scary. right, yeah. Yeah. and whatever our parents were dealing with. And so... We don't. We didn't always talk about. We don't always talk about what children also need is that emotional development. Mm -hmm. You know that attachment, that that relationship that is also an integral part right. of development. Right. Right. Neurologically, um, emotionally, all of that. Mm -hmm. So I love that you are starting these conversations. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you share. You have had experience with um, bullying and being mm -hmm. harassed as a child, mm -hmm. um, but. Of course, now we always say like, oh, well, you know, children are just sensitive. Mm. Um, bullying isn't that big of a deal. Right. Everybody has to deal with it. What would you say about the people that make the conversation a little less? They, they downplay it. Um, bullying is like a, a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's real life. Mm -hmm. Like um, I think I was bullied in like elementary, but I don't even think that the bullies knew they were bullies. Mm. I think that the bullies thought Bullying can be a lot of things, and sometimes bullying can just be 
playing right and and you get your uh, they get their laughs and giggles out of picking on right. this child yes. mm. they're not thinking like no one ever as as it was more verbal no one ever touched me mm. yeah it's not a it wasn't a oh i'm getting beat up right in the bathroom type of thing but emotionally yeah. it's different yeah. because when you go to school it feels like no one is your friend. And then I say this all the time. Sometimes people don't feel like being the butt of the joke that day. Mm -hmm. and even you with your friends. Even right? with yeah. your friends. Yeah. You don't feel like that. Now, again, um, there are things that there are places. There are places for every everything. And I do think that sometimes kids are more sensitive. But as a parent, mm -hmm. um, again, that's communicating. Right. What's going on today? Right. How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Why are you? What are you? Right. Mm -hmm. Who did you sit by at lunch? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Such and such. Just know um, who your child is and know who their friends are. Like one thing um, I can say is somebody posted this on Facebook the other day. Like do parents know the parents of mm -hmm. their children's mm -hmm. friends right. anymore? Do you even, when I was growing up, my mother knew every friend of mine. Mm -hmm. She can name my friends right. till this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I can literally name, I can name a couple of my daughter's ch uh, friends, but for some reason, I don't think we're growing up in the solid, fr mm. we're not growing up in the solid friend age anymore. Right. So where I grew up at, we had a street and everybody on that street grew up together and we all went to the same school. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's not like that anymore. Right. Yeah. And for some reason, I think it's like weird because I was like, I mean, I know there were apartments, but like, it feels like parents now are moving mm -hmm. all the time to where these kids keep having to start over, start over, yeah. and start over to yeah. where now nothing is is solid, mm -hmm. and and so now they're meeting all of these group of people. And the one thing that I always I moved, I went to nine schools, mm -hmm. so that was a problem for me because yeah. when I would get in the school, right. people have already formed their clicks. Yes. Right. clicks. So now I'm coming into this school and I'm ending up in places that I possibly wouldn't have ended up mm, in right. if I would have came at the beginning of right, the school. Right, right, right. Then on top of that, now I got to do it again. Right. Yeah. again. So I think that like um, when people say that these kids are sensitive, it's like, okay, that may be true, but what are the parents doing for your sensitive child? Right, right. If, right. That's, the, if, if that's, that's the case. If that's yeah. the case. Yeah. What are, and now... The bullies aren't the one. The bullies aren't the danger anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the ones that are getting bullied. Mm -hmm. They're the dangerous ones. Right. Right. So if you and and I know this, it, you also have to think of the opposite because one of the episodes in Amygdala is also about this topic as well. You don't always think of your child as the victim. Mm -hmm. Find out. Right. What's going on? Find out because if because what happens is. Everything is all good until that other student comes to the school and your child is the target of those bullets mm, because yeah. you wasn't aware that your child was using all the those Jordans and those 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 clothes as a way to downplay somebody else right. that's not having them. Mm. So it's kind of like you have to know who you you got to know who yeah. your child yeah. is. Well, it's what we talk about all the time relationships are everything right and mm -hmm. it's about staying connected and you know hell it's hard i get mm -hmm. it i'm a parent i got three of them <laughs> and, and and the the times have changed right like where before when the block was closed down the block was closed down and now the block stays open mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. of the internet because mm -hmm. of phones and so it's definitely different times which I think just speaks even more to the need to stay connected, to have conversations, difficult conversations, yeah. like mm -hmm. about these topics, yeah. and that we still have to have them, and probably have them more than ever. So this is great that you're doing this because you're sparking these great conversations. Mm -hmm. They're probably making people uncomfortable right oh. now. <laughs> so That's deep fine. breaths, feel the feel the the ground under your feet and get grounded again because it is important and we can have them and we need to have them because um, without acknowledging what is, we can't do something about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think an important thing that you said about the bullying 
is the the playfulness of it sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there is. It's, it's the, okay, I make fun of you. I make jokes about you. We all laugh. And then if you get your feelings hurt, then you can't take a joke. And that's right. not fair for where I can. So now I can't even express that, hey, I don't like when you talk about right. me that way because now I'm even more sensitive or whatever right. the case may be. And so I think it's important to recognize that just because regardless of if they're sensitive or not, whatever, however you want to the say it. children are sensitive. Yeah. As they should be yes, because they are learning yes. resilience and, and all that kind of stuff. they're not adults. And exactly. I get my feelings hurt And I was just time. about to say, when I'm, I'm the butt of the joke, it's not fun. It yeah. doesn't feel good. Well, on top of that, this we're in this age being liked is the number mm. one priority yeah, right right so when a child is not being liked mm -hmm. or being verbally bullied right. that's that you it's like, devastating it's devastating and then it's like not only am i not liked by the people that i'm around every day now they're posting it right and now i'm not liked yeah. and being laughed at by the way yeah by, by and the if world. things at right. home are People aren't connected at home. Where where do I fit in? Yeah, right. Where and children, that's their job is to be social. Yeah, right. Like that's you're. They're learning social skills. They're learning about relationships. They learn uh, through those relationships about how to manage conflict. Right. They learn about boundaries. They learn about consequences of decision making. Like so, yes, that they're they're learning. They're yeah. learning, and they are sensitive because they don't have the cognitive ability right now um to, to process so much so so much of it is they're this little ball of nerves right and just trying to make their way through so yeah i wouldn't go back to being a kid if i could no. No, that's my yeah, I'm cool. okay. yeah, I'm cool. okay. all right yeah, so what is your <laughs> right yes what is your um favorite resource book podcast anything that like could help the audience yes for self-care self-care um i would I, I listen to uh, John Gray. I listen mm -hmm. to T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. I listen to people that listen to something positive every mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. right. I don't really right. care who it is because there are a number. So Ed, I think uh, uh, E.T. Um, Eric. Uh, Eric Thomas. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Eric Thomas. Every morning listening to something positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That frame of mind. Right. That entering your frame of mind mm -hmm. in the morning really, really, really helps out. Yes. Because it puts you in a what you what you speak and what you allow into your body right. helps your body function in that way that in, yeah. in that particular day. If you wake up in the morning and you get bad news and then right. you you think if you think right. it's going to be a bad day, most likely right. it's it going to be so a bad set day. Set the tone for the day with some with uplifting message. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, yeah just awesome. set the tone with a very, very positive note, and it could be from anybody. YouTube, uh, uh, you the can tween Google. Sessions. <laughs> yeah, the tween sessions. That's, actually, that's the one. Yes, that is the one. The tween session. That's the one. Uh, forget the rest of it. That's the one. Two brown jeans. No, yeah. but that's that's true though. Just having something positive to start off with, a even quote. if you have yeah, that's your anchor for the day. What? Yeah. Yes, yes. Google. So. Positive quotes. <laughs> How do you start the first five to ten minutes yeah. of your day? Do you yeah. pick up your phone and start scrolling? Yeah. Yeah. That's exact. Right. Okay, Be, listen, this is the thing. <laughs> He's like, what? This is it. When, when you wake up in the morning, I know this is a habit to pick up and scroll, mm -hmm. but what I want you to understand is when you wake up, the first five minutes are the most influence of your day. Right. So if you scroll, there is so much negativity coming Absolutely. from people that you're reading from that that enters your body yeah, yeah. and that becomes your thought process. Yeah, right. Before you scroll, get yourself centered mm -hmm. before you allow any other That's energy right. to come in within yourself. Yes. That's true. That's on everybody. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Love, love it. it. Love yep. it. Love yep. it. Love yep. it. Yep. Okay. So what makes you dope? Me? Yes. Oh, oh that was the answer. answer. That was oh, the answer. answer. <laughs> come through. <laughs> Okay, just me here. That's oh, it. Um, <laughs> I mean, refer yeah. to the earlier parts yeah, of our conversations, right? Like, about, about everything. Because um, I am the greatest. Like, yes, <laughs> I know that it sounds so cocky. I, you and have no, no idea how much I believe. Manifest so, that. This is what's crazy. Like, um... I write like an athlete. I was saying this the other day. For some reason, you know how like LeBron is uh, dunk on somebody and that that energy comes yeah. out. Ah. I do that in like Starbucks. <laughs> like I'll be writing something. Ah. <laughs> like it, and you can ask my editor. My editor Stan Hill. He laughs all the time because I'll call him and be like, ah. <laughs> and, like just wrote something dope. He just, he just did something dope. I'm like, yeah. yeah. So it's it's. I think it's just that um, 
I really, really want to get back to storytelling, mm -hmm. a campfire storytelling. I, I think that, that. It, it, it plants seeds in kids to just think outside of the box. Right. And um, me being from where I'm from, I don't think that um, it was a mistake. And um, the thing that makes me the dopest is like, I don't do anything without God mm -hmm. leading me in that direction. So right. I tell people this all the time. I, you shouldn't make me your competition because you're not competing with me. Right. You're competing with a gift that God gave me. That's not, that's not, don't. Do <laughs> yeah, don't do that. So <laughs> you know, it's, just, yeah, it's just work Keep together. Trying. It's mm. just work together because that's not going to be great, mm. you know, a great look for you. I so, love that. Uh, uh, you're competing with my divine purpose. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, like, that is. Right. Cap. You can try <laughs> it. Don't do that. Like, oh. <laughs> that's you know, another like, shirt. That's yeah, another like, shirt. Oh. Yep. I feel like that's an episode. Yeah. That's an episode of right. somebody trying to compete with the divine purpose of somebody. Oh, because tell me when the, you get that one. That's <laughs> the only. That is the only um, thing you should be competing with. Aligning if we would live like, yeah. in our purpose, mm -hmm. when someone comes against you, that's why God always said the battle isn't yours. You shouldn't even be worried about a competition because right. they shouldn't be competing with something that you're doing. They should be looking at what God is doing through you. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to do with the things that have been brought to me. I have worked. I write every day. I have worked because I love it. But the things that I'm blessed with come from nowhere. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the work that I'm doing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, yeah. what? I didn't even talk to you. Right. And then it comes from somewhere totally different. Mm -hmm. My first film got done because a lady contacted me off of Facebook and was like, hey, I like your post. <laughs> Keep at it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, thank you. You know, she was like, well, what are you working on next? And I was like, a film. And mm -hmm. she was just like, oh, that's good when it'll be out. I said, well, I have a little while before I can save <laughs> the rest of the money. And mm -hmm. she was like, oh, money's not an issue. Wow. I have, ne had Where never, you at? Met, <laughs> I have never met her before wow. in my life. But it's so crazy. By the time we linked, I was able to tell her investors no like I was able to say no I'm gonna do it myself I because like because being able to link with them and, and get my budget together made me realize I could do it mm, I love see, that. like I always tell people if you need money and you don't have it that's not what you need God don't put nothing on your heart that he doesn't supply you with. Mm. So you have everything that you need to get done the things that he wants you to do. So if you're if you're at a space and you're like, oh, I just need a million dollars. I just need it. And you're praying about it and you're not receiving it. You've missed the step. Yeah. Because you have to, everything that you do, God has a plan for it. He's going to make everything come on time. Mm -hmm. There are steps that you've missed if there's something you cannot get. Right. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, want you to, and it could be the way you're thinking. Right. It could be a DBA. Mm -hmm. But I knew, I'm asking people for a million dollars not knowing what I'm going to spend it on. Mm -hmm. Well, what it, then now that puts me in a position to where if you give me this million, I'm going to fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't know where to put it. Yeah. So when I did this budget, I'm like, whoa. I can afford this. Mm. Oh, because that's not, because our mind, when we don't understand something, we think it to be like yeah. way up here. It's like, no. Nah, when like, you break it down into what it actually man, is. Man, that's yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah, Somebody right. needs to hear that. Definitely. Take that. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, take that. Take that. Take that. Yeah. Well, and I think what you're talking about, we were talking to with, with Zila earlier about that is, you know, bringing it to kind of our field is you may have this inspiration to go into the mental health field, mm -hmm. which is not known for being, for you even be able to pay your, mm -hmm. your student loans, right? Um, but showing up mm -hmm. and then having the right people in your life, right? And sometimes the right people, they just reflect back to you mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that Whoa, I didn't realize yeah. I already had what I, what I needed, from, right? Because right? that's what she did. Yeah, I, I, she reflected to you. Wait, like, that's not an issue. You already have mm -hmm. what you need mm -hmm. and so, got you to think. Think about it like this, too. You're trying to, or you're, you're advocating for mental 
help. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you can you help more people as a TV talk show personality mm -hmm. or as a doctor? I'm not a doctor, so I know. <laughs> no, 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 no. As a doctor. Which one can reach out mm, to I got you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So open up your mind your possibilities. to the possibilities. Who do you want to That's know? what it's somebody not, was saying. Yeah. yeah, it's not about, uh, and I'm not telling people not to go, go to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, there's, there's many, many paths. paths. Right. There's, there's many, many paths. paths. Right. There are what? many paths, but the goal is to affect as many people as possible. If I would have waited to try to be a director I got you. after mm -hmm. I went to school, yeah. I would still not be... Where you want right. to be. Where I want to be. Right. Go for it. And again, allow God to show you where you need to go. Because sometimes school is the path right. to change laws and to get into, you know, the hospital. There are doctors that we need and all of that. But mm -hmm. the field is open and healing comes from any yes. dynamic. Right. Yes. There's many, we say that all the time. There are many paths to healing. Right. We were talking about that topic earlier today. Be open to what that looks like okay. for you, mm -hmm. whether you're looking to be on this side of the couch or that side of the couch, you know, like how you can play a role, right. but just being an advocate in some way. And that's really what you're doing. And I love, I love this, this, the, the way that we're ending this session today, <laughs> I'm going to have this in the morning. Right, that's what I'm saying. This is what this I'm going to be listening to in the morning Definitely. because what you're talking about is awareness figuring out how you're being called to show up in life mm -hmm. and and knowing that sometimes our greatest fears um they're just kind of like these scenarios that we've made up and, and we don't even head. realize yep. what yeah. we're capable they of they don't doing. even exist yes. Yes. yes 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 all right so how do, how do people keep in contact how do they find you how do they get to see amygdala can they right now yeah they can they, okay. can, they can actually see the first episodes this me being um a rebel mm -hmm. um if you you can find me anywhere courtney glade uh last first name courtney Last name G L A U D E. You can put that on. That's on IG, Facebook, or anywhere. Mm -hmm. Amygdala is has a amygdala page where the first four episodes are on the page. Okay. Hurry up and watch them because they gonna make me <laughs> that. Um, the first four episodes are on the page. We'll put the link in there. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you can purchase all of the episodes, which are eight on Vimeo on demand. Okay. Amygdala. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So. Thank you so for much sure. for you this. This was such us. a good conversation. Bring me back. We can yes. do it again. I we, promise you we won't have as many technical difficulties. Right. We gonna, it ends up great. <laughs> no, yeah. There's a reason why yeah. we're trying yeah. to have yeah. this conversation. Yes. And I want to okay. hear that message, especially at the end, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But we back. persisted. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We will continue the conversation, definitely. Uh, make sure you follow us at Melanin and Mental Health across social media, Melanin Health on Twitter. Um, of course, you can catch Between Sessions across anywhere you listen to podcasts and also on YouTube at melaninandmentalhealth.com. Um, we have all our episodes there as well. This month, um, at the end of this month, October 22nd, I did look it up. I, um, I'm doing a webinar online about starting a private practice, so private practice one-on-one. -on -one. If you are just now getting into this entrepreneurial private practice, trying to figure out what that looks like, make sure you join the webinar. Um, it'll be two hours of as much as I can jam in it as possible. It's so much to go over, but I want to make sure that we have the tools to be able to start, so that's not an excuse. Um, and so then we also have... Yes, I've I've got my phone dead now. Okay, <laughs> we're um, all the details. We are going October, to be doing a panel for uh, October 29th. October 29th. Yes, um, UHD on October 29th. Um, we are going to be serving on a panel. KOG speaks. Her late. Do you, have, do you are you going to be there? <laughs> premiering her film that day on diversity and tackles also the issues of mental health um and uh sexual trauma um in the military so some some really important issues and ebony and i will be there to be talking about um whatever may come up as a result of watching this and and having the conversation started because it can certainly be very triggering if today right. you're feeling triggered that's probably not a surprise so make sure that you are doing some self-care after this um session um 
But yeah, come out, get tickets for that. We're going to put the all ticket the link. All of the information is going to be there so you can get tickets for that event. It's going to be on October 29th. It's going to be at my alma mater, UHD, <laughs> Go Gators. So lots going on. Yeah. So make sure to continue to follow us, Mellow Daddy Mental Health slash events. We put all of our events there where we'll be speaking and what we have going on with Mellow Daddy Mental Health. And we will talk to everybody next week. All right? Bye. Bye.